Uh, when I go in and 50% is returned and I add heavy to go out in three pushes or 50%, do I go out of everything or do I leave one lot to ride? Now, what ARK is asking, ARK is one of my traders. So what ARK is asking in somewhat of a complicated manner is, do I take all of my gain? Do I take a part of my gain? Now, when I strip all of the complicated terminology away, that's at the core of ARK's question. And this is the age old question. Now, I'll tell you a quick story. I was sharing this story earlier. One of the, every trader has that one demon that tends to be the toughest to conquer, that one fault, that one idiosyncrasy, that, that one thing that haunts them. The thing that haunted me, traders, was snatching at my gains too quickly. Now, I, had got, I got myself to the place of being very consistent and, and nicely profitable to the point where I could support myself, support my family, and do quite well, all right? But I stayed at a plateau in my development for a good year and a half, almost two years. I could never go to the next level. I was doing well, I could support myself, which, which in and of itself is a huge accomplishment, but I saw traders around me that were really knocking the ball out of the park to use a baseball analogy. They were just beasts, they were monsters, and I still felt small, I still felt inadequate around them, I still couldn't break past a certain level. And the reason, and I knew what my fault was, I was snatching at my gains too quickly. Now to this very day, that is built so, that is embedded so deeply into my trader DNA that I've never been able to totally eradicate that fault. But what I have done is I've mitigated, I've mitigated that problem and reduced its negative effects by incorporating what I call the incremental sell approach. And this is what I believe is appropriate for the vast majority of players out there. I decided to split the baby. So instead of trying to force myself, which didn't work for almost two years, trying to force myself to extend my profit taking, to not snatch so early, I realized that the urge to do that in me, right, was just too powerful to conquer. So how could I actually satisfy that urge, but also satisfy the desire to gain a bigger profit? And so what if I could find a way to do both? So there's this little tiny character speaking in my ear in, in, on this side saying, see, don't take your profits too early. You're missing too many gains. And then there's that voice that says, no, take one, one bird in a hand is worth two. You should take the profits while you have it. This is how you support your family. What if I could feed both of those characters on each side of my, of my shoulder? And that's what I decided to work on. I decided to work on snatching, but snatching with a third of my profitability. And then when there is another, that made it easier for me to ride with the other two thirds, right? But I, the, the feeling would come back really fast and if I got additional gains, that feeling would pop up again. Snap, you, you got more now. Snatch it, snatch it, snatch it, take it. And then I decided instead of fighting even the second urge, I'm going to satisfy that urge. But now I'm going to try to deploy almost a forgetful diff discipline to the last third. I'm going to sacrifice the last third. So what helped me, traders... This was amazing for me. This blew off the top, this two-year kind of ceiling that held me back. This blew the top off, right? So I decided to look at every trade as if the trade was really two-thirds. And I was willing to sacrifice one-third for the extra cherry on top. So the extra cherry on top was the final third, but that really wasn't the real trade. The real trade was the two thirds. The cherry on top is the last third. So I was willing to say, all right, if I break even on the last third, then no harm, no foul. I didn't lose anything because my real trade is two thirds of the trade. This is the cherry on top. But if I get more, then I've got my cherry on top. 
if I manage to blow this trade out for a mega gains with this third, I've got a big giant ter cherry on top. But if it doesn't work, I'm going to get out of this last third at break even and no harm, no foul because the trade is really two thirds. And when I went to that one third, one third, one third approach, I blew my record out. I could never get past a $15,000 day. And I, I tried. I, I was around traders who had $200,000 days, $85,000 days, $60,000 days, $125,000 days. And here I am, I'm bumping up against 15,000 and I could never break it. I would disintegrate or fall apart at that number. And this is what got me past it. Sacrificing the last third as if it's not part of the trade with a break even stop. Almost to the point where I could forget about it, not forget about it, but not worry about what it did. And oftentimes what that showed me, it showed me something that I continue to teach and drill into my traders today. What that taught me, that practice taught me is something very valuable. It taught me that the trades that got to me having the final third, the fastest, statistically turned out to be the biggest winning trades of all. I'm going to repeat that, guys. So there is, remember, my approach was to, to, to take a trade and then when I get a nice takeable gain to snatch one third away, and then if I get additional gain to snatch the second third away and to let the final third rock, right? There were trades that actually got to that stage rather gradually, rather calmly. But the ones that turned out to be statistically the most powerful trades are the ones that had me snatch, snatch real fast because they were so powerful. They were like, it was almost like a powerful bull coming out of the gates, right? And so I'm constantly telling my traders today, if you get a gain that's almost violent in nature, if you come out of the blocks in your trade powerful, abruptly, like a big giant bang, that trade typically has a lot more left. But if you have gotten to your goal of taking a profit kind of gradually, almost like the stock was kind of trotting along, taking its time, that one statistically is not often the big win. The big win comes explosively. The big win is when you want to jump up and high five someone who, and no one's in the room, and you still want to jump up and high five someone. That's the one that's going to go way further statistically than you ever thought possible. So do your best to hold on tight, sit on your hands, Go to the bathroom, walk around the block if you have to, but don't let that one go so fast.